Hi everyone, in this video we will see about spot speed studies and speed and delay studies. Spot speed is nothing but speed at a particular instant. Suppose your vehicle crosses this point at 70 km per hour, the speed which shows in your speedometer, that is the spot speed. If another vehicle crosses at 60 km per hour, that is the spot speed of that vehicle. So at this point, if you keep on observing vehicles and their speeds, that is nothing but spot speed. Now there are two important questions. How to measure spot speed and why do we need spot speed study? Spot speed study is used for designing geometry of road like horizontal curves and vertical curves. You need to know the speed of the vehicle to design the curves and also for deciding the safe speed limit and also for deciding the location of speed limit and signs. Here I will tell you an example. Suppose there is a road and suddenly a narrow bridge is coming. You need to indicate with the help of a sign. Suppose if the suppose if all the speed of the vehicles is around 20 km per hour, then you need to place the sign here. But suppose if all the vehicles were going around 80 km per hour, if you make the speed limit here, then there won't be enough time for them to see and then observe this narrow bridge. So you have to keep the speed limit sign way ahead of the bridge. So that is why to decide the location of speed limit and different sign boards we need spot speed studies. Now let us see how to measure spot speed. You take a stretch of a road say about 30 meters and there is something called inoscope. Inoscope is nothing but a mirror from which you can stand here and observe the vehicle this side. So when the vehicle passes this point you start the stopwatch and you see through the mirror and the, when the vehicle crosses this point you check the you stop the stopwatch. So with the time taken and the, with the distance you can measure the spot speed. Now I'll tell you what is 15th, 85th and 98th percentile speeds with the help of an example. Suppose you have measured spot speed of 20 different vehicles and these are the ranges. 20 to 30 km per hour say 3 vehicles passes and 30 to 40 km per hour 14 vehicle pass. 40 to 50 km per hour another 3 vehicle passes. So total 20 vehicle have passed at a point. So here 3 divided by 20, 15 percentage vehicles are around 25. 20 plus 30 by 2 is 25. Here it is 35 and 45. These are the median speeds. So 15 percent of the vehicles go at 25 km per hour and 14 divided by 20 is 70 percent. 3 divided by 20 is another 15 percent. This is the frequency. Also we will see what is cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is 15 percent for 25. Those who travel less than 35 km per hour is 3 plus 14, 17 vehicles which is nothing but 85 percent of the vehicles and 100 percent of the vehicles are under 45 km per hour. So this is cumulative frequency. When you draw a graph between speed and cumulative frequency you will get a graph like this. So at, at 25 km per hour only 15 percent of the vehicles go and this is 35 and here you have 45. So at this here around 85 percent of the vehicles go here 15 and here it is 100. So here 15 percentile is the lower speed limit. If below this vehicles passes it will block the other vehicle. Suppose say a bullock cart or tractor goes in highways at a very low speed then it will block the other vehicle. So we have a lower speed limit which is decided by the 15th percentile speed. In this case it is 25 km per hour and 85th percentile is the upper speed limit. 
because only 15% of the vehicles drive faster than this. So this is the speed limit of the road. The one which you often see in highways and all that is the decided by the 85th percentile speed. And the 98th percentile speed is used for design purposes. If we draw a graph between frequency and speed, you will get a graph like this. So here 15% have passed and here 70% and here 15%. So this is the frequency versus speed graph. Let us see what is running speed and journey speed. Running speed is nothing but it is the speed of the vehicle when it is at motion. Suppose a vehicle is at A. Suppose a bus starts at A, travels 50 km in 60 minutes. So the running speed is 50 km per hour. It say it stops at B for another 30 minutes. And then again it starts and goes to C for in 60 minutes. Another 50 km is travelled. So the to total running speed will be 50 plus 50, 100 kilometer in 120 minutes, which is nothing but 50 kilometer per hour. And journey speed is the total time taken, including the stops. It is stop and go condition. So here it, the total is 60 plus 30 plus 60, which is 150 minutes and 100 kilometer has been traveled. So it is 40 km per hour. This is the journey speed. Before I move on to speed and delay, I have a simple question for you. You tell me what is the speed percentile which is used for design purposes. You can vote, I mean you can answer at the poll at the right corner of the video. Speed and delay studies are especially used to take running speed, journey speed and delays from the field. There are different methods used to measure speed and delay. First let us see one by one, license plate, plate method. In this you observe a license plate that is number plate of a vehicle at this A point and if you observe the same number plate of the vehicle at B point after 20 minutes and it has covered its distance then you will get the travel time and speed of that vehicle in this you cannot observe delays and all and in interview method you ask the you stop and ask the driver this data may not be accurate and in elevated observe, observer method you stand on an elevated position say that pedestrian pathways and all are there near intersections there you observe the vehicles. This is a very short term method. Floating car method which is also called the moving observer method is one of the important methods to measure speed and delay which we will see in detail. Usually floating car and moving observer method is not only used for speed and delay but it is also used for measuring flow and speed simultaneously and density can be derived from flow and speed using the equation q is equal to kv. Now let us see what is how to measure flow and speed from moving observer method. Say there are two cases. Suppose this is the road. First case is when the observer is stationary and the traffic stream moves. Suppose there are n naught vehicles crossing you in time t. So flow is nothing but n naught by t. Some if 10 vehicles have passed you in 10 seconds, flow is nothing but 10 divided by 10. One vehicle per second is the flow. Second case is when you assume that the traffic is stationary and the observer is moving in a car or anything at a speed of v naught. Then if suppose you have crossed NP vehicles 
through this length L then it is nothing but a same as density k is equal to np divided by l you have crossed np vehicles through the length l at a speed of v naught so k is equal to np by l because you have moved at a speed of v naught you can use l is equal to v naught into t Now consider the case where the observer also moves and also the traffic stream also moves. So N naught vehicles would have crossed U and you have you would have crossed N P vehicles. So we will take the difference N equal to N naught minus N P. So from these two equations we will get N is equal to Qt minus K V not T. So here you have two unknowns. To solve that you need two equations. So there will be so we will create two equations. One when you flow with the stream and one is when you flow against the stream. With the stream N W we will take N W equal to Q W minus KL. I am writing the same equations with the subscript W and when you are against the stream suppose this is the stream and you are going opposite the stream it is nothing but you are going with the stream in negative velocity so N A equal to Q T A plus because it is assumed that you are going in negative velocity with the stream QTA plus KL. So from this equation to equation you can get Q and K. So if you solve this Q is equal to NW plus NA divided by TW plus TA. So TW and TA will be mostly similar because that is the time you take to travel that length L. Remember very important fact is that NW equal to N naught minus NP which will, we will see later in the problem. And from this we can derive space mean speed that is the speed. So if you solve the equations you will get Vs equal to L divided by Tw minus Mw by Q. Now let us solve a problem and see to understand this. Suppose the length of the road stretch used for conducting the moving observer test is 1 kilometer and speed of the test vehicle is 20 kilometer per hour. So the time taken for that will be T which is nothing but TW is also same, TA is also same, TW equal to 1 kilometer divided by 20 kilometer per hour. So time taken is 1 by 20 hours. Now Q is equal to as per the equation Q is equal to NA plus NW divided by TA plus TW. We know that NA against the stream is 100. So you write it as such. And what is NW? NW is nothing but N0 minus NP. The number of vehicles which overtook you is N0 minus NP. The number of vehicles overtaken by you which is 40 divided by TA plus TW. That is nothing but 1 by 20 plus 1 by 20. So if you solve this you will get answer of 800. 800 vehicles per hour that is the flow. And to observe space mean speed V s equal to L divided by T w minus 
एम डब्ल्यू डिवाइडेड बाई क्यू टी डब्ल्यू और टी एवरेज हियर एल एस वन किलोमीटर वन डिवाइडेड बाय वन बाय ट्वेंटी माइनस एम डब्ल्यू इज नथिंग बट ट्वेंटी माइनस फोर्टी ट्वेंटी माइनस फोर्टी डिवाइडेड बाय एट हंड्रेड सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस यू विल गेट वी एस विच विल कम अराउंड थर्टीन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री किलोमीटर पर आर so from these two equations you can get k q is equal to kv so k is equal to q divided by v 800 divided by 13.33 will give you the answer that many vehicles per kilometer thank you guys for watching the video Before you leave, I have a question for you, which was asked in IES 2016, I guess. So the question is, over speed and delay study to conduct that, which method is used? To answer that, you can answer at the card in the right corner, corner of the video here. To watch more videos, please subscribe our channel. Thank you, guys.